hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is ayo bablo i'm your corner thanks for tuning in if it's your very first time welcome 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 and if you're a returning subscriber thanks for always coming back i'm glad that you always do today i'm going to be talking about navigating your state accommodation in the uk i'm also going to be mentioning some popular accommodation website for students and also the ones peculiar to Teesside university in middlesbrough let's jump right into the video <music> I'm going to be giving in this video, you already know them. I'm just going to be retracing them to you and explaining them a little bit better so that you have a better understanding of them. The first thing is that you have to start early. You need to plan ahead and start looking for your accommodation early enough. You don't want to come here stranded or having to pay so much staying in hotels or having a feel that you may be inconveniencing someone. So you need to plan ahead. And also because securing an accommodation takes a whole lot of process in this country. You don't just see an accommodation and you know you're moving straight into it. It takes processes, it takes days, it takes documentation, and you need to follow the process. Um, most times, this is not their fault. It's just that they have to carry out the checks according to the government, and sometimes they have to pass it on to maybe the local government of that area to do, um, you know, further checks and all of that. Also, sometimes they might need to do credit checks on you, and those things might not come back immediately. Bear in mind that they also have other people that they are attending to at that time, so these things take a whole lot of time. It might take days, weeks, and months, just depending on the housing agent you're dealing with. So it's better that you plan ahead. It's better that you plan early enough. And most times, the thing that delays this is probably having to get your guarantor, doing a check on them, and doing a check on yourself too. These things might not come back early, so you need to plan ahead so that it can be done for you and one thing you can do is this like that you start searching before you even get to the uk once you already know that you'll be coming to the uk at least two three months at that time you should start looking for your accommodation it might seem ridiculous but it is important that you start looking for accommodation most times there are already pictures and videos of this accommodation and this housing agent like that you see the house physically if you can get someone to do that for you it's fine if not you can request for your virtual view just tell them that you're not in the area at the minis and you like a virtual tour of the house. So even if you're not here yet, as soon as you get any accommodation you like, you can just pay your holding fee. They're just going to hold down the apartment for you until you're ready, until, you, until you're here. And if you're able to pay, it's fine. So just make sure that you're securing your accommodation before you get here. It will save you a whole lot of stress. I'm just going to be saying this in no particular order. So another thing you should have in mind is your budget. You need to know how much you're willing to spend. There's some accommodations that look very beautiful. I know everyone wants to live in a beautiful apartment and all of those things, a luxury apartment. You need to know if you're going to be able to pay that on the long run because the students are going to be working 20 hours during term time. You have other bills to pay and all of those things and you might want to save, do one or two things. You don't want to be spending a whole chunk of your money on your accommodation. So get an accommodation that looks very okay and according to your budget so that you don't spend above it. Don't think once you come here, you're earning a whole lot and you want to live in a luxury apartment, spending so much on that. No, don't fall into that trap. Just make sure that you get something that is okay and something that you can pay for on the long run. Another thing is to decide what kind of accommodation you want. There are different types of accommodation. It could be an in-suite apartment, it could be a shared apartment, it could be a studio apartment or flat, it could be, you know, a furnished or an unfurnished apartment. Those are the things you have to put into consideration. An example of a shared apartment could be an apartment with maybe three or four bedrooms with one toilet and one kitchen. And some of these shared apartments have in suite rooms whereby you have your own bathroom to yourself, but you're going to be sharing the sitting area and the kitchen. And if you're going to be getting a studio apartment, it means you have all of these things to yourself. You could get a flat too. If you're coming with maybe your friend or someone you know, you get a two bedroom flat or three bedroom, depending on what you want. You should also know if you want to stay in a furnished apartment or an unfurnished apartment, or a bills inclusive apartment or an apartment where you have to pay your bills yourself. All of these things are important. If you're just going to be coming in and if it's if it's just you by yourself, I'm going to recommend that you get a furnished apartment and a bills inclusive apartment. It saves you a whole lot of stress. For the bills inclusive, they get to pay all your bills for you. Water, electric, gas, your internet, they'll pay that for you. And if it's a furnished apartment, it comes with everything you need. You just need to move your stuff in. But if you're going for an unfurnished apartment, it means there's 
literally nothing in the apartment you have to start buying and it might be stressful for you even though they might be cheaper than a furnished apartment but trust me that stress of going through furnishing especially if it's just you're not coming with your family you might not need to go through all of that stress and if you're not going to be paying your bills then you need to start looking for your utility or service providers you know licenses and all of that even if you're in a furnished apartment that has a tv you might want to ask them um, about the license of the TV and all that. And that brings me to the next point of saying you need to read your tenancy agreement and know what is in it. Know what your contract entails. Know what the agency will be paying for. If there's any damage, what you'll be paying for. You know, how you're going to be paying your rent. And there are, there are a whole lot of things embedded in your tenancy agreement. So you need to go through your tenancy agreement. You need to know what it entails. Don't just sign. If you're not sure about anything, you have the opportunity to ask them questions and they will explain to you, oh, this is what we mean here, this is what we mean here. Don't be in a rush to sign any agreement. You need to know what is in your contract. Especially maybe as regards, like I said, when there are damages, when you have to move out. Some of them are required that you tell them months before you're moving out and all of those things. Usually the deposit fee is an equivalent of your one month rent. And this is held by them. So if there's any damage or anything, you're not paying your rent, they can take out of it. And at the end of your tenancy, they return your deposit fee back to you. Most times they don't return the actual fee. They'll tell you that, oh, there's something that has happened to this, there's something that has happened to this and we have to deduct the money. So you have to know what is in your contract and how all of those things will be sorted at the end of your tenancy. Another important thing you should take into consideration is the location. How far are you willing to travel? How far are you willing to go? You need to keep all of these things in mind. Most times accommodation around square area are usually much more expensive because they know that students want to live close by and you know all of those things the ones further away might be a little cheaper but then you have to consider transportation you have to consider your classes are you going to be able to get to school early enough are there buses or trains at the time are there buses or trains you know early mornings or late evenings if you have to go back home you need to take all of those things into consideration sometimes you know accommodations around school are for maybe single people they are shared apartments so if you're coming with your family you might want to consider going a little further away just a little further away from school just make sure that it's commutable for you and it's okay for you so that you can get a family apartment so putting your location into consideration is another very important thing and even if you're a single person you might want to just stay a little further away from school if you wish to do so so it just depends on you know individual differences if you are able to commute it's fine some people go as far as going to the nearest town to live just because they think that oh maybe um there are more job prospects in this area or accommodation is better in this area just make sure that you do your research before going at this point i'm going to be mentioning some of the websites where you can find student accommodation easily so you can check amber students spare room right move student pad rooftop living zoopla and open rent and some of the ones peculiar to um, Tisside university is spare room right move zoopla open rent on the market students only Accommodation for students, TS1 student, Hunters, Progression Lettings, Readouts, Rent UK, Ashbrooks, CNN Property. There are just a whole lot of them. But the popular ones that host all of that, you know, estate agents are um, Spare Room, Rice Move, Zoopla, Open Rent on the Market. Those ones host other estate agents. So once you like open these ones, then you get to see other smaller agents that are under them and you get to secure your accommodation. Another thing you should bear in mind is that because of the influx of students lately into the UK, accommodations are filled up. So I think that is another reason why you should start looking for your accommodation early enough. Don't wait until last minute. You don't want to be stranded. So there's been scarcity of accommodation. I even heard some schools had to tell their students to the five they cannot get accommodation. That is how bad it is. So you do not want to get stranded. It is important that you take your accommodation seriously. So if you are going to be studying at Tisa University, aside from the popular student area TS1, you want to consider living in other places, Stockton, Tonabi, Pitali, Sunderland, Newcastle, if you are able to travel. There are so many other places like that that you like to consider. Just make sure that you check on the map and see if you are willing to go that you know distance for your accommodation so that brings me to the end of this video if you have any questions do put them down in the comment section below if there are any other tips i've omitted that you think would be helpful for other people just drop it down in the comment section below let's just you know be helpful to one another and um i'm going to see you in my next video if you're yet to subscribe please subscribe to this channel like this video share comment and all that good stuff and i'm going to see you in my next video until then bye